everyone. In this episode, we're going to speak about research on the possible toxicity of nanoparticles. So, Pierre, when will we be able to say, be careful, this particle is toxic, but this other one is not at all? Unfortunately, it's not that simple. As toxicologists will tell you in theory, it depends on the dose to which the person is exposed. What do you mean? Everything is toxic? <laughs> if you drink 12 liters of water in a minute, for example, you will die. Of course. So, in your case, what is a dose? It's the quantity of manufactured nanoparticles that you inhale, ingest, or that are deposited on your skin in a given period of time. If I understand correctly, the lower the dose, the more difficult it is to uncover the effects. Precisely, Kathleen. This is one of the major difficulties in estimating the impact on health and the environment. What other difficulties are there? On the nanometric scale, the same substance can take on a multitude of forms, sizes and surface conditions. It would take millions of experiments to test all the configurations. So what can be done? Laboratories around the world are sharing the work involved in in vivo and in vitro testing of the most currently used particles. In vivo and in vitro? What does this mean, Nano? To find out the response of cells to a dose of nanoparticles, there are two solutions. Test their effects on animals, in vivo. Test cell cultures, in vitro. In vitro tests, which are easier to implement, provide clues that must then be confirmed on animals. Extrapolating the results to the effects on human beings then raises other issues. None of this is simple. Pierre, please give us a concrete example of experimentation. Well, in my laboratory, we're presently testing nanoparticles' capability of going through the walls of the lungs or the stomach. How are you doing that? Pierre reconstructs a digestive epithelium in vitro, and we grow the appropriate cells on either side to simulate the inside of the stomach and its environment. Then we deposit nanoparticles in one of the environments and we observe them. For each type of particle, for different doses, we count the number of nanoparticles that go through the wall of the stomach. Yes, but these are simply experiments in plastic boxes. How do we know this is what would happen in human beings? A good question. The next step is to expose laboratory animals to nanoparticles and to look for any traces in the different organs and in the blood. Is that really necessary? With in vitro tests, we can limit this type of experiment to the strict minimum. If we observe that the nanoparticles do not go through the membrane, we avoid animal testing. When the opposite is true, though, we need to experiment on animals to attempt to estimate the effects on human health. Well, thank you, Pierre. In our next episode, we'll take a closer look at the precautions that need to be taken during the nanoparticle production phase. <laughs>